looking out here and kind of seeing all those smiling faces, I think, because all the masks are covering up, so I can only read your eyes. So uh, this is a real mass, just to let you know, even though we're on a stage and it looks like uh, uh, basically we're acting, we're not. We're actually in kind of embracing our Lord and doing so, adapting to uh, the challenge that we, challenges that we face. So it's an important aspect that we know we continue to do the things that are necessary, um, even though we have to adjust our own way of doing those things. Uh, this is my 12th year here. Yeah, woo. Yeah, well, thank you very much. Thanks. This is my 12th year here. Um, and I know, uh, maybe it's not good for pious, but uh, this begins Lent for me, uh, the, the whole aspect. But Lent is really a wonderful season because it draws us closer uh, to God. It reminds us about our responsibility. So uh, coming to Pius always is a, a, a special treat for me. Um, and being with you is a special treat during this time. Uh, and we do so around the altar. Uh, we'll make shift altar here, but around the altar, uh, which is the altar of sacrifice. Understanding the great love that Jesus has for us and gives to us um, especially understanding during this time. And then our response, how we have to adjust uh, our own lives accordingly uh, to make sure that uh, we're responsive to that love and accountable to that love. So we begin our liturgy as we address our God in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Yes, and brothers and sisters, in order to prepare ourselves to receive these sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our own sinfulness. Lord Jesus, you came to bring peace through the blood of your cross. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you died and rose for the salvation of the world. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you'll come again to establish your kingdom of justice forever. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. And let us pray. Grant, O Lord, that we may begin with holy fasting this campaign of Christian service, so that as we take up battle against spiritual evils, we may be armed with weapons of self-reliance. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Joel. Even now, says the Lord, return to me with your whole heart with fasting and weeping and mourning. Rend your hearts, not your garments, and return to the Lord your God. For gracious and merciful is he, slow to anger, rich in kindness, and relenting in punishment. Perhaps he will again relent and leave behind him a blessing, offerings and libations for the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, proclaim a fast, call an assembly, Gather the people, notify the congregation. Assemble the elders, gather the children and the infants at the breast. Let the bridegroom quit his room and the bride her chamber. Between the porch and the altar, let the priests, the ministers of the Lord weep and say, spare, O Lord, your people, and make not your heritage a reproach with the nations ruling over them. Why should they say among the peoples, where is their God? Then the Lord was stirred to concern for his land and took pity on his people. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, we are ambassadors for Christ as if God were appealing through us. We implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him to be sin who did not know sin, so that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Working together then, we appeal to you not to receive the grace of God in vain, for he says, in an acceptable time I heard you, and on the day of salvation I helped you. Behold now is a very acceptable time. Behold now is the day of salvation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be Thanks to God. Be The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, take care not to perform righteous deeds in order that people may see them. Otherwise, you'll have no recompense from your heavenly Father. When you give alms, do not blow a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets to win the praise of others. Amen, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right is doing, so that your almsgiving may be secret, and your Father, who sees in secret, will repay you. When you pray, do not be like the hypocrites who love to stand and pray in the synagogues and on street corners, so that others may see them. Amen, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you pray, go to your inner room, Close the door and pray to your Father in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will repay you. Choose life then, that your descendants may live by loving the Lord your God, heeding his voice and holding fast to him. 
That way may mean life for you, a long life for you, live on the land that the Lord swore. The gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. Addressing you here and those who are watching uh, uh, via a live stream uh, uh, back into their classrooms. Uh, uh, certainly, every Lent presents various challenges. There, there's no doubt about that. And every year coming here, there were certain challenges that we face. But it's, it's very obvious that this challenge is like no other that we've experienced. Uh, when you're talking about facing a pandemic and talking about a Adjusting it, you, the first thing you say as people of faith, why God, why, why God, why? Uh, but I believe that even during these difficult times, God's saying stuff to us. God's directing us. God's helping us to raise our consciousness about his presence among us. Uh, I say that's important because we take a look at what this uh, pandemic has helped to teach us. One, in the, during this time of the pandemic, we know we've had to adjust the various things that we're doing. Our normal routine has had to change. Uh, and we did, did that, that because we value life. We value life. Uh, it's a reminder of how precious life is and how quickly that can change. How fragile we are as human beings. Now we're kind of um, affected by something we can't even see. We can't even see, but have to deal with it. Life is precious. It's a reminder to us of it. And so we adapt. You're wearing masks. We keep social distancing. We try to do the best. We wash and sanitize our hands. We do what is necessary in order to preserve that preciousness of life, the preciousness of life. Second thing that um, I see immediately that's been, been an instruction from God to us is how much we need one another. How much we need one another. Family, friends, those people that uh, surround us. We need each other. No doubt about that. Um, and this brings it home. So what do we do? We adapt again. We try to use our technology to be, bring us together so that at least we can keep in touch, we can be with one another in a, a special way, we can, we can be for each other. Uh, I, I can tell you as uh, the leader of the Archdiocese, I had no idea last March or April what the heck Zoom was. But now it's almost like a, a common parlance for us. We reach out to do that and we know that we do that so that we can stay together so that we can continue to, to offer uh, to each other that support that we know we need for ourselves and for those who are dear to us, uh, who, those who are close to us, those who share kind of our vision. The third thing I think, which is for me most important, it's a reminder how much we need God in our lives. God can become an afterthought for many of us, and oftentimes does. You can see that, an afterthought for the society, an afterthought for, for, in, for individuals. Uh, yeah, God is it's a, a nice thing to do, but not necessarily involved in our day-to-day -day activities. I can't, I can't tell you how many people have told me immediately that they pray now daily, offer their prayers. Daily. Why? Because they understand that although this life is something that we embrace and cherish and celebrate, it's not the fullness of life. The fullness of life only comes through the love of God in the life that is to come. During this Ash Wednesday, we will celebrate and we will hear those words. Remember your dust and to dust you shall return. A stark reminder that although we kind of think 
a thing like death, this fire behind us, it's there always present in our lives. And the one thing that conquers death is faith. Is belief and trust in God. And belief and trust in God helps to move us closer to the love of God and helps us to celebrate the fullness of life, not only here in this world, but in the life to come. We take a look at the person of Jesus Christ. It's Jesus Christ giving himself, literally, as the Son of God, over to us as sacrifice. He stands in our place. And because he stands in our place, he offers us the forgiveness that only God can give. Only God can offer. And it's only through that sacrifice that suddenly we are made to embrace our God in the fullness of what we were intended to be. To be with him forever. Uh, there's no doubt when you listen to economics or you go to the class, and I know our deacon's a math teacher, but I can't wrap my mind around trillion. Can you? I mean, I, it's hard for me to think about a hundred, but trillion. You imagine, imagine those zeros after that, that, that number? And yet, you know, our country is quickly going into 24, 25 trillion dollars. Trillion dollars. A debt? What a debt! You imagine if someone came along and said, don't worry about it. I know your children's 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 children will be paying for this debt. Don't worry about it. Give that debt to me. Signs a check and pays the debt off. We'd name every street after that person. We'd name every college, university. Jesus did for us far, far more than the $25 trillion. He took a debt upon himself, and he paid it for us. He took our sins and gave us life. He conquered the two enemies that we as individuals face in this world, sin and death. And he turned those into life for us and forgiveness. So when we begin Lent, we, we pledge ourselves to draw ourselves closer to God by our actions. And you heard in terms of the gospel, Jesus even instructing prayer, fasting, almsgiving. In whatever way, shape, or form, grab hold of those modes and manners. Grab hold of them and use them in order to draw our Lord closer to you, his love closer to you. So that's one aspect that we do. But we also recognize our sinfulness important for us to do that. We're not perfect beings. We commit sin. And it is sin that forces God away from us, that destroys that relationship. We have an opportunity now during Lent to take a look and examine our lives and to proclaim our sinfulness before God. You heard in the, the prophet Joel, the whole people came together to proclaim their their sinfulness, so that God would recognize that and forgive them. During this Lent, take advantage of reconciliation and confession. Embrace, embrace the ability for your lives to change and to be different because of the love of God, and accept that love into your heart and share it with others. We take a look at what this pandemic is teaching us. It is teaching us always keep God close. For it's only his life that means everything. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In a special way, I want to th thank um, uh, your president, Jack Herbers, the individuals who are um, um, Mr. Jeff Johnson, who is um, uh, basically your pr principal. Um, those individuals who are the teachers and the classes. I want to thank, thank them all so much for having a dedication to you. Um, I know um, uh, Dr. Kathleen Sepelka is here, who is from our, um, um, our school's office. So it should tell you how important setting off Pi uh, the beginning of Lent right here at Pius is to have the superintendent of schools here 
with us during this time. Uh, but in a special way to the teachers and to the administrators and to those who are there, thank you for your dedication to your students. They love you. They care about you. They care about the vocation they have as, te as teachers and to be present. And they are doing the things that are necessary in order to demonstrate that, hold it, cherish it, um, and offer a special prayer for them. Dear brothers and sisters, let us humbly ask God our Father that he be pleased to, to bless with abundance of his grace these ashes which we will sprinkle over the top of our heads and penance. O oh God, who are moved by acts of humility and respond with forgiveness to the works of penance, lend your merciful ear to our prayers and in your kindness pour out the grace of your blessing. Bless your servants who are marked with these ashes. As they follow the Latin observances, may they be worthy to come with minds made pure to celebrate the Paschal mystery of your Son, through our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Remember, you are dust, and to dust you shall return.
before God, our Heavenly Father. The response is, Lord, hear our prayer. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, our Archbishop Listecki, and all church leaders, that they may be blessed as they lead us through this holy season of Lent, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For world leaders, that they may seek truth, goodness, and right in leading our world to peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For those who struggle, those who are poor, sick, or forgotten, that during this Lenten season, they may feel the special outreach of others, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For our pious 11th community, that we may live our Lenten theme, Walk in Hope, especially during these challenging times, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For the intentions we hold in the silence of our hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Father, hear the prayers we place before you, those spoken aloud, those which remain in our hearts, and if it be in your will, grant them through our Lord and brother Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable and pleasing to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. And let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you will that our self-denial should give you thanks. Humble our sinful pride, contribute to the feeding of the poor, and so imitate you in your kindness. And so we glorify you with countless angels, as with one voice of praise we acclaim,
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. For as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, my assistant bishops, Richard, Jeffrey, James, and all the clergy, religious, and laity everywhere. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, St. Joseph, her chaste spouse, St. John the Evangelist, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, together we dare to say, Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom. Amen. Amen. The glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And let us offer each other a sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
And let us pray. Bow your heads for the blessing. May the sacrament we have received sustain us, O Lord, that our Lenten fast may be pleasing to you and be for us a healing remedy through Christ our Lord. Before I give you the final blessing, we want to especially want to thank uh, Mr. Herbers and uh, Mr. Um, um, Ostaff, uh, Mr. Johnson, uh, the teachers, um, um, administrators here at uh, Pius, but in a very particular way to you, the students. Um, you're the reason why we are in existence in terms of the mission of Catholic education. Uh, uh, you make us proud by living fully, uh, not only the, the discipline that you're taught here, but by, by living fully the command uh, to give back to others and to love one another in the name of God. Uh, so we thank you once again for this. The Lord be with you. Spirit. Blessed be the name of the Lord, now and forever. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And lastly, my thanks to, the, uh, uh, to our performers, uh, those who are singers and our instrumentalists who helped us to pray so well. Thank you very much. God bless you. Thank you. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you.